Say that. Um, just to recollect where we were last week. Uh, last week we were discussing about food. Krishna is talking about uh, food and the importance of food in our path of spirituality in general. And also to tell Arjuna how we can get over our uh, identification with the body and attain the good qualities which uh, the devotee uh, Jnani has. So I will stop here. Um, I will ask the sisters to continue from where we left off. Sayed. It is not enough if the provisions are pure and of good quality. They should have been procured by fair means. No unfair, unjust, untrue earnings should be used for one's maintenance. These are fouled at the very source. The source as well as the course and the goal all must be equally pure. The vessel must be clean, free from tarnish. The person who serves must not only be clean in dress, but clean in habits, character, and conduct. He should be free from hate, anger, worry, and indifference while serving the dishes. He should be cheerful and fresh, and he must be humble and full of love. While attending on those who are dining, he should not allow his mind to dwell on wicked or vicious ideas. Mere physical cleanliness or charm is no compensation for evil thoughts and habits. The sadhaka who has to, to secure concentration has to be careful about these restrictions. Otherwise, during dhyanam, the subtle influences of the wicked thoughts of the cook and the servers will haunt the sadhaka. Care should be taken to have only virtuous individuals around. Outer charm, professional excellence, reduced wages, these should not be allowed to prejudice you in favor of dangerous cooks and attendants. Examine carefully their habits and their character. The food you eat is such an important constituent of the physical and mental stuff which you have to struggle in the spiritual field. The physical and mental stuff with which you have to struggle in the spiritual field. The purity of the mind can be and has to be supplemented by the purity of the body, as well as purity in its important function, speech. That is the real tapas, physical, mental, and vocal. Thank you, Kalyani. Um, I think Mani Aunty is not there. So, maybe I will, I will read the Telugu and attempt my best yet to leave it to Swami to make sure that I do an okay job. Dini ki inkanu konni suddhamulu kavalasi unnabi. For this, you will. A few more uh, cleanliness also required. Modatidi vastu shuddhi. The first one is cleanliness, purity, or cleanliness of purity of the material. Rendavadi patra shuddhi. The second one is the purity of the Vessels. Mudavadi 
వండు వారి లేక వంటించి వారి శుద్ధి ప్రధానములు అని ఇంకను క్రింది విషయము చెప్పును the third one is the people who cook as well as people who serve their cleanliness or purity is also necessary thus further this uh, below these subjects are spoken about or he spoke vastulu manchi viganu shuddhamu ganu ఉన్నంత మాత్రమున చాలదు ద మెటీరియల్స్ ఇఫ్ దియర్ గుడ్ అండ్ ఇఫ్ దియర్ ప్యూర్ ఓ క్లీన్ ఇస్ నాట్ సఫిషియంట్ బై ఇట్ సెల్ఫ్ ఆ వస్తువులు ఏ విధముగా లభించినవి దోస్ మెటీరియల్స్ హౌ వర్ దే అబ్టైన్డ్ అవి లభించు మార్గము నందును అన్యాయము అసత్యము అక్రమము అధర్మము ఉండియుండ కూడ కూడదు ఉండి ఉండకూడదు ద ద పాత్ బై విచ్ వి హ్యావ్ వి ది మెటీరియల్స్ ఆప్టైన్డ్ ఇన్ దట్ పాత్ దే షుడ్ నాట్ హ్యావ్ ఇన్ ఎనీ ఇన్జస్టిస్ అన్ట్రూత్ Uh, abuse or adharma atti malinyam tho a vastuvulu cheri unda koodadu that kind of blemish should not be mixed up with these materials labinchina margamu koodanu shuddhamainadi shuddhamainadai satyamainadai unda valayunu even the way these were procured should be such that they should be pure clean and they should be true patra shuddha mainadi chilumu part did we cover that is also covered vessel also covered also in the i think that's all uh, is in the telugu okay uh, but i think there's some more stuff here i will just read uh, this okay i don't think this was translated in english patra shuddha mainadai chilumu pattani dai undavalanu the vessel should be such should be pure as well as it should not be um, affected by chilumu uh, is thing uh, one second i will just check this way so there should be chilum uh, patrana that means uh, there should not be any metallic chilum uh, is actually anything metallic in its taste so i think it should not be um, leaching certain substances in the food vandu vaadu koodanu shuddhamaina battalato shuddhamaina hastamulato shuddhamaina paravattana kaligi anaga దురభ్యాస దుస్సంగ దుర్బుద్ధులు దుర్నడతలతో మాలిన్యమైనవాడుగా ఉండకూడదు ద పర్సన్ హూ కుక్స్ ఆల్సో షుడ్ బి వేరింగ్ క్లీన్ క్లోత్స్ హిస్ హ్యాండ్ షుడ్ బి క్లీన్ ద పర్సన్ షుడ్ హ్యావ్ గుడ్ క్యారెక్టర్ అండ్ గుడ్ బిహేవియర్ that means he should not have any bad uh, tendencies 
he should not have bad company he should not have bad uh, intentions his activities should be uh, free from any blemish వంట చేయుచు అతి పవిత్రమైన చింతలను చింతనలు చేయక విసుగు కోపము ద్వేషము మొదలగు భావములతో మాటలాడక నగు ముఖముతో విశ్వాస విధేయలతో ప్రీతిగా వండించ వండు చుండ వలను స్వామి సేయింగ్ ద పర్సన్ వైల్ కుకింగ్ should be not having any bad thoughts he should have all pure th- thoughts uh, he should not have um, the feelings of disgust anger hatred etc and the person should be with a smiling face with faith and with humility with lovingly he should be cooking vantu nanta varaku chadda talampulu leka unda vaadai unda valanu until he finishes cooking there should not be any bad thought in in the person who is cooking Uh, I think there may be some more to it. Atlu kaka vandu vadu chu chutaku shuddha muga undi tana chinta nalu judamu paina paina judamu paina dur nadata paina unchu koni visuguto inka pani poorthi kaledu anu kopamuto చిట పఠమని కొనుగుట కొనుగుటు చేసిన వంట సాధకులకు ఏకాగ్రత చేకూర్చరు చేకూర్చదు ఇవి ద పర్సన్ హూ ఇస్ కుకింగ్ ఈవెన్ దో ద పర్సన్ మే బి క్లీన్ హిస్ ఇన్ హిస్ థాట్స్ హీస్ ద థాట్స్ ఆర్ సెంటర్డ్ ఆన్ బ్యాడ్ యాక్టివిటీస్ అన్ట్రూత్ అండ్ విత్ డిస్కస్డ్ uh and having anger that you know the work is not yet finished uh doing you know is doing with abruptly if he does that kind of a cooking the person who eats will not get ekagrata one point at least in their thought antati antati to poka dhyana mandu జపమునందు వండు వాడు తలంచిన దుష్ట భావములు దృశ్యముగా వచ్చి నిలుచును పర్సన్ డస్ దాట్ సమ్ నెగటివ్ టెండెన్సీస్ అదేర్ ఇన్ మెడిటేషన్ ఓర్ ఇన్ జప వాట్ ఎవర్ థాట్స్ ద పర్సన్ హూ కుక్ was thinking about those will appear in the person who is meditating as bad feelings and also as visualizations in the person who is meditating kana vandu vaadu konni manchi nadavadikalu kalavaadai yunda pala you know the person who is cooking should have good habits and good actions atti vaane విచారణ సలిపి నియమించుకొన వలను సచ్ పర్సన్ హ్యాస్ టు బి ఎగ్జామిన్డ్ అండ్ దెన్ అపాయింటెడ్ ఏదో మంచి రుచి ఐ థింక్ దిస్ ఇస్ నాట్ కవర్డ్ ఐ థింక్ ఐ విల్ స్టాప్ హియర్ కదా ఐ థింక్ ఐ హోన్ పాస్ట్ సో ఐ విల్ స్టాప్ హియర్ ఐ డోంట్ హెవ్ ఎనీ వన్ హుడ్ లైక్ టు డిస్కస్ స్వామి ఇస్ గోయింగ్ ఇన్ టు గ్రేట్ డీటెయిల్ as to how a person who is cooking should be and uh, we have to ensure that such people only cook only then our meditation will fructify we will be able to have ekagrata in our meditation otherwise we will have 
the same bad feelings the cook was thinking in our own mind during our meditation. So I'll stop here. Okay, so one line, Uncle, I just didn't get that one. Um, uh, dusanga, it was Durabhyasa, Dusanga, Durbuddhudu, and Durnarat. So Dusanga was bad attachment. Bad company. Bad company. Yes. Then the next one, Durbuddhudu. Means his intelligence oh, is, will be also tainted, you know, bad. Okay. okay, the bad type of discrimination. Discrimination is just bad. Or in, Durnadatta means his behavior is bad. And in the English, it, it was talking more about the person who is serving, but uh, Swami is re really talking about the person who's cooking the food. Um, mainly, uh, Swami is talking about Vanduvadu. Vanduvadu means generally it's cook person who is the cooking. Um, if auntie has come, maybe we'll ask yeah. auntie. Sairam. Sairam, auntie. Vantavadu is only the cook person who is cooking, no, auntie? Yeah, Vantavadu is the one cook. Yes. Cook is called Vantavadu. Vanta, ante, vanta means uh, food. food. The one who uh, cooks it is cook, what we call Vantavadu. In the translation, auntie, they have talked about people who serve uh, the food. Yeah, even, yeah, even the the person who uh, oh. serves the food also. But here, Vandu means cooking, no, auntie? Is it... Vandu, Vandu term. Vandu term is the correct Telugu. Yeah. Kalyani, the thing is, uh, the people who cook and serve generally are, you know, the same, you know, that's the reason. Mm -hmm. um, I think that uh, that's that may be the reason. Serving is also equally important. Just the way cooking is also important. The thoughts, the person has any negative emotions also is bad. Mm -hmm. If the person has angry about somebody, uh, you know, thinking about bad, you know, uh, things. Bad thoughts in his mind. Yeah, Bad mind. thoughts should not be there. So, Sairam, brother, in Telugu version, Kalyani asked something and you said bad company. We don't have any in English version. Is there something like this as well? The food affects our company? The person who cooks should be a person free from bad companies. Oh, sure. Okay. Thank you. Sairam, Mani auntie, maybe it is, uh, the uh, how Swami selected the cooks and the uh, you know the maybe serving people way back you know the, the at the party whether the the cooks and the you know the maybe serving people they would go through him maybe uh, nowadays uh, I don't want to hear but those days maybe in you know the seventies eighties maybe those cooks would be selected by Swami and they, they, they assigned them as cooks for the, uh, the cooks uh, for making prasadam and those things they back because uh, I don't know how the process would have been way back at, at the end in those days because when I visited my first visit it was in 1992 mm -hmm. the at the time you know the very you know they they very simple and i was even in the lineup i was able to hear the chanting the kayatri mandra and later when i asked them they said no not in the, the cooks they are chanting the gayatri mandra i was able to hear at the time they even allowed me you know i i was very curious you know where these you know gayatri mandra is coming and they even you know, they, they allowed me to go and you know, they look at inside, you know, the, and all the cooks, you know, they, they were chanting the Gayatri Mandra and other mandras. I, at the time, I didn't know, you know, what are those mandras, you know, they, they were cooking. And they, uh, I was wondering, maybe all the cooks, they would have been very, very familiar with the 
Veda chanting and those things, you know, now I am wondering, you know, the after 30 or even 40 years, <laughs> you, know, they, they... you mean about the canteen? I think you are, you have visited the canteen at uh, saw all the people who are cooking there. Yeah, they are, they they are, Swami's devotees, they're all sevadals. They must be known to Swami very well. So uh, I, I don't think there is there was any problem with uh, these uh, cooks who, who were preparing the food. But earlier, earlier days, uh, in, for example, Navaratri and uh, Dasara uh, and uh, Shivaratri or such occasions when people used to gather and I remember very early days, I mean, 50, 50s, as I, I'm talking about, uh, my mother and the other aunties, three, three, four aunties, they were very good cooks. So Swami used to ask them to cook. My mother has done it during Navratri. And people would come, but um, a limited quantity of food was, used to be prepared. But as usual, Swami would come and touch them and say, Akshaya, Akshaya. So that would be enough for everybody who, who attended. But uh, I later on in canteen, I don't know about this. Sevadal must be cooking and they, they, are, they are great devotees of Swami. I'm sure uh, there was no, no process or no um, particular way of selecting them or anything like that. They were all um, uh, Swami's devotees, Sairam. Thank you, Auntie. I just wanted to, the, I, I thought, you know, uh, maybe Swami you know, the very elaborately you know, the, the put all mm. the, you know, the characters and you know, how the uh, the padatha suti, patra suti, the, the yeah, yeah. suti and those things. And that's why I thought you know, he would have had some process, you know, the, the, the... No, the Sevadal people and other devotees who are in charge of the cooking area, they would have seen that everything is perfect, everything is padartha should be, patra should be. Everything they would have been, um, I think I'm sure they would uh, looked after all these things. Sai Ram. Sai Ram. Anyone else would like to comment on anything which we have read so far, studied so far? Sai Ram, brother, the vessel must be clean. Free from tarnish. Why? Why uh, the idea? I'm trying to understand that part. Uh, I know. You, yeah. One time we have inside the coding or something like that, but it's something to refer to our uh, thinking to something. Uh, I don't. I couldn't get around. Uh, understand that part. The tarnish we know, but Swami is trying to tell something that uh, related to our thinking too. So that's what I'm trying to understand. Thank you, Sairam. Sairam. So in the case of vessel, in a vessel cannot think any bad, any bad thoughts, sister. So <laughs> yes, we just be just clean. It's that I understand. Any vessels used in the process of cooking and serving should be clean. Why tarnish? Only new pots? Uh, I'm just thinking. <laughs> I, I, I don't know. I feel. Yes, you know, is that is Swami mentioned, brother, tarnish also? No, no, Swami. Uh, Auntie. Don't, 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 uh, you know, uh, what I feel is, yes. you know, in those days, the huge brass vessels used to yes, be yes, yes. used for cooking. You know that brass vessel as it is, you cannot cook in that brass as it is. So what do you do? We put that uh, kalai. Yeah, that yeah. Coat, coat inside. Some coat, 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 coat inside. Coat in. You know, sometimes if the coat is, coating is gone, so naturally that would be the tarnished vessel. It's, you will see that everything inside the vessel should be coated properly. Even if it is a small place which is left out without the coating, it would spoil the whole food, cooked food. I think Swami mentions tarnish means, I think as far as it is concerned, the vessel is, Swami means vessel, vessel only. And of course, if you are applying for spiritually at a higher level, yes, our mind our minds are also tarnished with so many polluted thoughts. It should be clean. 
to receive to receive swami's grace or swami's uh, this thing uh, prasadam anti the telugu chilumu pattinadai ah chilumu ade chilumu pattedante ade what is that sir? i am talking about and the green or idu vardama yeah in the yeah in the grass you get a, the green thing that green thing yeah, that's called yes. chilumu chilumu na ade da chilum pattedi so how that we are relating to our mind or things i'm just okay something Nothing to do with mind sister just vessel yeah it is vessel only swami is talking yeah swami has already covered the mind enough sufficiently uh mm -hmm. of the people in so this is vessel okay tarnish okay tarnish we get it from that yes yeah, swami is even talking about wearing clean clothes someone was saying that somebody uh, cooks with wet clothes also i don't know whether he has you have to have shower you have to have clean clothes then you have to cook so i think even physical cleanliness is also external yes. cleanliness also is given equal importance this one yeah. no sister anandhi was asking about cooks all cooks sister are assigned by swam uh and the swami also comes and inspects the canteen hostel kitchen once in a while swami will do some surprise visit i think when he knows that people are not cleaning properly he will come and check to make sure that you know they pay attention to this such things swami used to do the we back you know the Uh, plenty of you know, the food at the time in 1992 in the canteen and very 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 nominal price and they say even though they make it a small portion swami will you know, come and you know, bless the food then until the last person you know, they comes the food would be coming from that in you know, the pot or pan or you know, the, the, from that one you know, the the uh, uh, i was really really surprised by that time you know, even in the the uh, i was living at the time in north india you know, the, 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 and uh, i came down i i really surprised at the time the the food you know, until the last person you know, comes in you know, the, it would be a plenty of food you know, the, but swami will you know, the, make sure you know the, the, it would be coming from the vessel kind of yeah arun in the in this line yes sir telugu ah vandu vaadu chuchutuku shuddhama ga undi tana chintanalu joodamu paina that he is uh, thoughts are about joodam ante ida is cards vedi adra da is it uh, yeah i was i just said uh, something negative that's all i said joodam made joodam ante horses <laughs> and that is what is it called judam judam uh, judam uh, what is it uh, buried in english i am get not getting it judam who dies playing gambling dies gambling gambling that's called judam at gambling 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 judam pai durnatata pai judam pai adhe adhe దుర్నడత పైన ఉంచుకొని వెను విసుకుతో ఎంత పని పూర్తి కాలేదేను కోపంతో చిట్టపటమని గుణముతు సో మేబీ ఇట్ ఇస్ అబౌట్ సంబడి ఇస్ నాట్ థింకింగ్ అబౌట్ ద లాటరీ లాటరీ ఆర్ హిస్ ప్లే కార్డ్ ప్లేయింగ్ కార్డ్స్ ఎనీథింగ్ యు నో వేర్ దే బ్రదర్ తాసన్ సారం బ్రదర్ సో దట్ మీ ద వెసల్స్ వాట్ ఎవర్ యు ఆర్ యూజింగ్ ఫర్ కుకింగ్ దట్ vessel supposed to be carried in proper way purchase 
not illegally, not cheap somewhere. It has to be uh, uh, the purchase supposed to be good condition. Yes, brother. that's also very important. Yes, brother. Sai, brother, do you? It's just this it reminds me a story, and correct me if I'm wrong. Where a sage or a sadhu he went to eat some food somewhere, and on his back on his way, when he finished, and on his you know when he was exiting the the house, he picked up something. He basically stole something from that home, um, and then when he inquired why such a bad behavior, why my act was so you know, that I picked up something from their house and then he looked into, it must be the food, the person who cooked has affected the receiver's thinking as well. Something like that I remember for Balvika's kids, last, how the food affect. Sorry? Same, last week's uh, Sai Satish said the same Oh, story. sorry. Yeah, I was yeah, no problem. so sorry. No problem. It is good to hear it again and again. So food prayer should help them because either there are two choices I'm looking at. Either we stop cooking because <laughs> until we become that pure or there has to be way out until we get that pure. <laughs> if you stop cooking. <laughs> it's a good excuse, Auntie. I can tell at home that until I get that level, I can't cook for then you guys. What, then what will you eat, sister? No, I can eat for myself like I am improving but not for others everybody start cooking on their own food then <laughs> but on the serious note it 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 reminds me why I mean I'm just going back to my grandparents they never used to eat out even to people's houses I remember my grandfather used to eat food if he has to go to a wedding my mom still does that she eats food if she will go to people's houses, but she will never eat in people's houses. Oh. I didn't know why, but it's just, I think that's what she has learned from her mom or whatever, but she doesn't eat to people's in people's houses. Yes, I think that's the practice. Many Brahmins will not uh, eat. eat they not even eat. They won't eat while others are looking. Uh. Yeah. <laughs> it's called Swayam Pakam. Mm. They call it Swayam Pakam. They used to do, many of, many of them followed that method of cooking for themselves. Yeah, it's like, it looks like, um, auntie, you may know, but, you know, in, in India, I remember that there used to be a different slippers, the wooden one to go in the kitchen. I remember I grew up in that. You can't enter. You have to change your slippers. You have to wash your hands. You can't cook until you take a shower. So we... If we don't, if we haven't taken a shower, we were not allowed to enter in the kitchen. That's correct. So it looks like those practices have, like reading Swami, what he's saying, that we, those practices, what we had way back has, you know, we have forgotten. They have to, we have to bring them back now. Yes, sister, I think you can start implementing. No, it. I am going to, I at least... You know, sometimes you cook just without shower in the morning. Okay, let me just cook and then take shower. It's wrong. Take a bath. Do your prayers and then go to cook. Yes. For sure. Good learning. Thank you. Sorry. Would, they, would they shower like each time they cook? Like, cause, I mean, you you know what, um, what I remember, if you use a washroom bathroom, they used to take shower. I remember that. If you go yeah. to a toilet, um, my aunt and my mom used to take shower, clean. Uh -huh. In a day, if they will, they, they will take a shower. Yes, correct. Uh -huh. My grandmother. Yes, yeah. Yes, my grandmother used to do that. Yeah, they used to take a shower. Yes, Brother Dasan. Yes, sir, I'm brother. I like that when the food is God, God is food. If you are in a satsangam or if you are in bhajan place or if you are in the wedding, um, if when they offer the food with the love, you have to accept that one. Because that is the one going to give the energy for you to bless the couple or you wherever you are in the place, 
to make you active. So sour is important. Your out your body is supposed to be clean. Your your mind is supposed to be clean. Your body is supposed to be clean. Your tongue is supposed to be clean. Thank you, brother Saira. Saira. Uh, why is it that they would not like people looking at them while eating? Same <laughs> idea, same idea. No company, no bad company. So, so it's rather than you know, selectively excluding people, exclude everyone. But even with their family, they are like they would not eat in front of their own family. Generally, they will be alone. Like so, each member of the family would eat by themselves. Some people who are very strict are very particular. Only the person who serves and them, you know, that that serious sadhakas are like that. But in public functions, they will sit among others and eat. But on a regular day, regular basis, they will be very strict about it. But I understand. That's where yeah. people, when they travel, they will not eat. Mm. There are people who, when they travel, they will not eat. In public places while others are looking on <laughs> is it that you, the, the person who's looking at them might have some negative thought or something yes, yes. the uh, back home you know the, in my school you know the, that is even the um secondary school you know up to grade eight maybe the, the, the all the uh brahmin students they would be they don't eat with the other students you know they, they would have a separate room they would go and lock the door and in that room only they would be eating and even you know, we are friends they would the the maybe some of them they used to tell that if other you know the non brahmins look at them it would be a great sin for them that's why you don't come and you know, look at them while they are eating you know they and uh, maybe at the time you know, they, they, I didn't know that you know, they, maybe the, what would be the real meaning and the explanation. But I still remember that you know they, they would be having in a certain room. Sometimes even a one person alone, they will be eating and coming out from that room. That's taking to the extreme level. But yeah. you know others would be eating non-veg or anything, some food. You know they don't want to mix. Uh, with uh, such things. So they used to, I think, uh, pure vegetarian food, they would be eating separately. Uh, but uh, nowadays schools will not allow such such things. <laughs> you sit in a row, eat, everybody will eat in one place and you also eat that. Uh, those days, you know, it was different. I think, Kalyan, you were asking about uh, cooking multiple times and multiple baths. Actually, in uh, the, a minimum of two times, one has to have shower, according to uh, one of the daily uh, practices prescribed by the Vedas. You have to have shower twice. So generally, people used to cook, have take two meals. So each of the meal will be cooked after having shower. Is because I remember um, one time, like for the boys in Brindavan, I did. I just vaguely remember Swami saying something like, "Maybe they don't have to shower right away in the morning because it's cold or something." Yes. So That's before Suprabhatam. Oh, before Suprabhatam. Yeah. yeah. So is this still practical even in this country to to we shower? Have showers. I think we have. Hot when, we have hot what's that? We have, hot, we have water. hot water, but it's also, I guess, water usage and resources and all that. See, I think even the water usage, you know, people don't take, you know, bath, immersing bath, you know, basically cleaning yourself is essential. Uh, I think that's, everything has its downside. Uh, it's not that you sit in the wa water and, you know, hundreds of liters of water, even people sit in bathtubs. Oh, that is sheer waste. But having a quick shower, uh, I don't think we waste too much water. A couple of minutes is good enough to wash. It doesn't have to be, you know, a very elaborate bath. 
generally in the, in the ancient times, people used to go take three dips in the river and that's yeah. bad. Um, that's it. Or keep Ganga Jal and sprinkle Ganga Jal on you. <laughs> <laughs> I can understand that, you know, like, uh, what I don't understand is like people just looking at you while you're eating because they're, they're not the ones cooking the food or anything. So why so, is that so big? If anyone looks at somebody else, actually that person's energy is t touching the person who is being looked at. The, there's energy flowing from a person to, to, uh, to the object where they're looking and it's returning back. So the person's thoughts also, you know, that's why, you know, you'll say Kannuru and all that, you know. Yeah, evil, yeah. Drishti. Drishti. So, see, any any form of interaction with any people uh, will have an impact. So thoughts, uh, sight, touch, every, all of them have impact on the other person. Or even the person's voice being heard, that also can... Uh, transmit that person's thoughts into the other person. So mm -hmm. there is uh, companies, all that. I don't think it is, you know, Western science will say, oh, nothing is happening. No, from you, nothing is reaching the other person. But uh, the understanding is when you look at somebody, actually you are projecting something towards that person and then that comes back. Yeah. You know, that's the uh, belief. Yeah, so many times, even if like if, so, if someone's staring at you or you're staring at some, you know, exactly. if you don't looking, you know that. Exactly. You know, sometimes people are staring at you, you turn back, you can feel it. Yeah. That means there is some mental energy coming and hitting you. Uh, that staring, yes, exactly. So it's the same thing. If people look at it, any thought which is passing in their head will actually taint the food you're eating. Yeah. That's the. Uh, that's what Krishna is telling. Even that person cooking has to be so careful because you could be doing such a disservice, I guess, to the people you're feeding if you're having bad thoughts. Yes. That's why even today's world, you know, people say someone was all good. And then suddenly something happened to the person. Actually, there are times in uh, students, you know, will come and tell Swami, Swami, you know, I'm having all this bad. The Swami will say, yeah, that's all because of the bad food you have had. Uh, so be careful what you eat. Uh, it's not fault of yours, but unless you're careful what you eat, uh, you will be exposed to it and uh, you may be affected by it. That's... To many students, Swami has said. Yes, Sister Arun. Sairam, brother, just a thought, brother. Because we are thinking, we are now like uh, getting into some details of other person who is cooking and all. Their habits, thoughts and conduct and all. At the same time, I am thinking to myself, how that we are going to balance, you know. We shouldn't judge, you know. <laughs> I'm just this like a confusing thing, right? So sometimes you ignore social law for everything. This kind of thoughts provoke uh, our institution to check on everything, right? Having a less of these kind of things will allow us to uh, like uh, concentrate on a lot more. Because these kind of things destroy everything. You have to go and look at it or food or whatever who is looking at the hook. That's that's sometimes I know Swami is saying for a reason, but sometimes how we do things, this kind of things uh, will take you into a different state of mind too. That's the thing I'm just thinking to understand what is Swami is really. Sister. There's, there's a difference yes. between judging and having discrimination. Okay, so you pass, uh, you are you passing a, you passing a place a bar maybe. Okay, people are sitting and drinking, taking liquor. You you should know this is a place where it's being consumed. 
you have it the place it is because you know that does not help your own spiritual progress end of story judging means you go and look at that person and say oh, why is this person doing why can't he be better is this acceptable isn't he a sai devotee why is a sai devotee they are doing this that is judgment just deciding this activity this person is engaged in is not suitable for me and i am not going to be part of it is discrimination very very yet be very very clear so we should never talk about any individual we should only talk about the activity whether it is worth or not if a person has engaged in some activity it is better to avoid that person we are not judging the person okay okay if somebody is sick and you don't want you know somebody has some disease which is contagious you will avoid the person are you judging the person you are not judging the person you are making sure that uh, the disease doesn't spread okay okay so any of this is also disease all this is disease judging means you know oh this guy is no good or you know he is very bad you know such thoughts are bad analyzing that person is bad you can analyze the activity yes and the actions actions okay yes so okay. it is a very subtle difference okay. you, then you maybe you will pray for that person may the person become better but until that person becomes better i am not going to associate nothing wrong with it okay okay so that should be that's the right attitude it just like a person who is contagious disease i don't want to Uh, touch the person i don't want to be associated with the person you are not judging the person you are judging the situation and you are making sure that it does not negatively impact yourself or people who are interacting with you so it's a, it's a kind of like a yeah, yes. okay, okay there's a bit uh, see okay. swami is very the discrimination part yes. so that is within me without hurting that for own for my own spiritual growth you are avoiding that place or avoiding that that kind of thing right swami has already talked about ekantavasa yes it's yeah. all about ekantavasa <laughs> yeah i know well very well brother. okay that's it okay okay thank you to saira is uncle gopalan saira i'm saira it's me uh, saira uh, we're talking about the food see when we are cooking or cutting the vegetables or namasmarana if you uh, do the namasmarana and listen to the bhajans and singing for the bhajan you know with the bhajans and uh, so that purifies uh, for the food and uh, because that's what i thought you know like uh, it's 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 good to say you know sing and uh, namasmarana or chant vedas and all those things helps the food to be purified thank you saira saira thank you aunty Yes, Sister Narmada. Sir, man, I just wanted to add uh, to what you know, Arun Aunty mentioned because I look to look at it in a different way as well. Uh, one thing, if we wherever we go, sometimes we cannot avoid to eat food outside, and, and that's why Swami says, offer to God before you eat, and uh, sw request Swami to uh, purify that. In that way, you're better. And moreover, with this Swami's discourse here and all that, I look at it in, in a way. it's more of a sadhana for ourselves like when we cook and serve we make sure we are clean we are cuz so in, in the same way like i look at it as us but for others and i don't think we should be judging anyone as anna has mentioned and if you it is pretty clear outside and you know very evident then you avoid but we should not i mean we don't know so we should not be judging others in that sense so in any case if you are in a situation i think offering to swami and eating that i guess that purifies it and that's how i take it so see the thing is swami is talking about the third person here oh okay okay one to vardu means he is not telling you are cooking think of it he is basically talking about a third person okay so that means the outsiders only so the thing oh. is, if you are really serious about spirituality mm -hmm. if you are really serious about this all this only applies to people who are serious about spirituality others who are not serious they can do anything right you know but for serious spiritual aspirants this limit associations right right limit going everywhere 
just because you know you like somebody you have had interactions with the person it should not be excuses for us to continue to indulge in what we are doing it's ultimately swami says you sit for meditation and are you getting ekagrata if you are not getting ekagrata some food which you are eating is not helping very simple in your spiritual in your spiritual activity if you are not making progress that means the first thing you should address is food where you eat who is cooking the food it's it is uh, uh, non negotiable that's why it is it is that's all you know if we are making not progress food is the cause that's what swami is i think that's why last week also i said let's talk only about food now because food you know adivi swami will not krishna would not have spent time talking about right. it and yeah. swami would not have spent time talking about it. it is just that because we have got the habit of eating everywhere going mm-hmm. everywhere associating with all sorts of people that is the cause of the problem so the thing is i think what a few of us whoever is coming here i think we should understand if everyone else is doing it, it's okay for them at least there should be a few people who should say okay swami has said this we should do something let us be the people see if you come home and everything is dirty everyone is keeping at least one person should clean are we volunteering to be such people <laughs> which actually requires a lot of sacrifice we can't be eating out every day we can't be ordering out every day so the thing is swami in one place he is telling a brahmana means he should have the discipline he should have the knowledge and then he should practice only then even if you are born as a any any in any caste if you lead a life like that then you are a brahmana so the thing is for the welfare of the world these people such people are needed so actually swami is trying to recruit let others in the world do anything they want but can we uh, roll up our sleeves and uh, be part of this is i think that's what i would say so actual swami is talking about third person not about ourselves thank because, you anna sorry which, i misunderstood then thank yeah, you which imp- because he's selling the he, cook yes brother dasan brother dasan i think you have to unmute brother the based on the comments brother of uh, uh, food is covered but at the same time we have to look at that one how difficult it is to cultivate the food you know so much of insect so much of uh, hard work so much of sweat involved in that one so when you consume the food you have to give the respect not looking at the tv not looking at the phone not talking uh, about uh, other people and everything so you have to have the tabas when you are consuming the food so when you are that is a main purpose also i think uh, thank you brother thank you brother saira Sir, brother. Yes, sister. So when this uh, food prayer comes in, then you know now we we got the food from things and we pray uh, Swami to yes. So we don't when we are cooking that point when we are getting from outside, we are making the prayer. Don't you think that will purify? You are saying if when uh, because the food prayer is there, we don't have to worry about these things. we need to worry about but yeah. but the food prayers they are for us to like uh, look at it little differently don't you think so because that uh, because where the food is coming from like a uh, say for instance sister uh, okay so i will uh, wedding and all right a uh, wedding food is coming at the time we make the prayer and you know, so i will tell us i will tell a story sister okay good thank you any people think you know we will say the prayer and then we are good actually in another study circle i mentioned this the best example for this is bishma in bishma he was a great uh, devotee he was very disciplined um he practiced you know what has to be done every day without any fail he must have chanted vishnu sahasranamam every day 
not only doing his sandhya and everything. If the food, he would have prayed. But at the court of Duryodhana, he was confused when Draupadi was being humiliated. Even when the Duryodhanas tried to hurt and harm the Pandavas, he was mute. He didn't speak. So when he was in the deathbed and when Krishna took the Pandavas to him and asked him to teach them Dharma, Draupati laughed. He said, you know, you are talking about Dharma. You are very knowledgeable. But what happened to you? when many things happened in the cover of our court. And for that, what he said was, I ate the food provided by the cover of us. We can never imagine to be the, meet the dust of Bhishma. Yes, as a devotee, as one who is very staunch in what he did. Very, very disciplined person who had all his senses under control. Such a great person just because he ate the food provided in the court of Kauravas, he didn't know what was dharma. He didn't know what was adharma. He was confused. When Draupadi asked, he says, is this dharma? He's telling, oh, it is very difficult to find define dharma. So, that's enough proof for you. Even You, may, you can do any amount of prayers. Oh, you can be the greatest of devotees you also can sleep. Okay. So okay. prayer is good. Prayer is needed. But you cannot solely rely on that alone. That is why Krishna is going through this. That is why Swami is writing all this. Okay. Good. The, same, yeah. the same Swami who told do the food prayer is telling this. Okay. So Thanks we can, a lot. So thank you can, for that wonderful clarification. We Great. can't take things lightly. Okay. Every word of Swami is important. We should try our, try our best to follow it. Yes, so, thanks a lot. Yes, Kalyani. Um, how do we like? How do we understand that you know the sannyasins and um, those people they would beg for alms and take whatever food they could get? Um, is it just that they're more evolved that they wouldn't be affected by it? Or... Kalyani, punya punya vivarjita panta. So they are sannyasis who are beyond punya and apunya. Uh -huh. Because for them, they will accept anything in the world. Mm. Okay, they are not they are not affected because they are sannyasis. Mm. They are much beyond uh, nor ordinary sadhakas. Okay, they wear the clothes on the street. Okay, they they don't be no attachment to anything. They are like God. Ah, they are like God. Papa and Punya will not touch them. Even if it touches, it does not affect them. We who are striving for us, it's a problem. Okay, that's why not a, all sannyas is sannyasis. I think Swami has already covered that. Just because we are there, there are many people who wear ochre robe. They are also in the same boat as us. So leave them out. Okay. So we are aspiring, right? Yes, we, are, we are still trying. So that we have to follow all these things. When we come to reach to a level, then punya and apunya is coming. See, there are many, many stunts, no? They will say, don't try this at home. Okay. <laughs> <It is safe>. <laughs> 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 Only a master stuntsman can do these things. Just because somebody is crossing the Niagara Falls on some tap trapeze rope, you know, we don't, we don't, we can't try. <laughs> okay, he is walking, so I will also walk. Okay, you can walk. Yeah, I, <laughs> I think our struggle is we have to decide whether we are on a spiritual boat or the worldly boat. We try to be on the both boats together. So from this conversation, it looks like before we get somewhere else, sit down and think which boat I would want to have along and choose the boat and firmly and believe it will work. 
or go worldly if you have to be worldly. But the problem comes when we are trying to say, if I do this, what happens? Just be on the, I think that's what I'm learning that sadhikas or those who really want to be a spiritual aspirant, you decide first what you want to achieve in your life and it will be much easier than Sairam. Sairam, sisters. When someone is trying to give you food, you know, out of their love or, you know, they drop off some food or something like that, then how do you reject that? Love is a dangerous word, Kalia. <laughs> <laughs> You know, we you know, you know, we should prop, we should dis use it with discrimination. There's only one love as Swami defines, love is only for God. Everything else is not love. Okay, so I'll yes, Brother Dasan. Brother Dasan already mentioned about people giving with love in wedding feasts or something like that. At the same time, brothers, uh, okay. even if the father or mother bring the money not proper way for an example you know some people give the money for high interest if you look at their progeny is not not in good shape so because the money was earned not in the correct way even though that bishma was on the arrow bed he said now the blood is all gone drain out now i am thinking my mind is clear now that is the reason now i am giving the advice also to the pond of us. So thank you, Brother Saira. Saira, thank you. So do you reject the, the food or do you just do you tell people not to give or <laughs> but we all <laughs> <laughs> you know, Sister Kalyari, I'll do that. I'll do that. I'll say I'm on a spiritual journey and I don't eat food oh from my. anywhere. I do that. You know what? Not the food. I tell you where we were long, talking about long time back, learn about karmas, even you owe people. I think in my history, where Swami's grandparents, they died and he asked to put some anas on his body, something like that, where he said, if I owed anybody, um, you know what, I don't want to die with owing anybody. At work, even if I ask somebody to get Tim Hortons, which could be a dollar fifty, and they will sometimes sound, they feel that I'm so cheap, I give them back. I tell them, you know what, I'm on such on a spiritual path and I believe in karma. So please do not just just stay. And now people know they will say, the, before I give them, they say, Okay, Shivani, give me one fifty dollars because you're karma. So I think you <laughs> To, to me, it's just the confidence, you know, whatever people think, once you establish that understanding, people, those who bring, people will respect, people will, that's, that's my two cents, we have to be very sure and tell people, hey, this is for my own personal growth, and I don't do it, that's just, <laughs> sorry, I, I'll do it, I, I'll, I'll say it. Yeah, I think so the implication know. that you're implying that they're, they're, are not pure enough for you in a, in a, the kind of not, implication is there almost like well, like if you're saying if you tell people that they you know that they might get that impression that they're not good good enough or pure enough to, to cook food for you that kind of sense yeah it's just they for my had. own spiritual yeah like for example what I keep a story not the story there was some situation where I think I read where if you're wearing white clothes and on you and you're walking on a street and there is a mud puddle you will detour you will save yourself you you don't want that splash on you because it will take long time to clean that stain on your body right on your clothes it rather you change your path right uh, to avoid that stain on you because you are getting better and purer and you so you are saying oh it's my not you are not pure but i am getting i'm working on a spiritual path and i don't accept any food from if people think that's their karma uh, Siren, brother, <laughs> just a you know, little follow-up on this discussion. Uh, the fundamental pr principle of you know, the, the spiritualism, you know, the, we look at the, uh, when we look at the another you know, the human being, we look at the divinity you know, the, within 
that person. So if we really look at the divinity in the, within that person, you know, they, we have already <clears throat> discussed about, you know, we shouldn't judge those people and those things. The, uh, the, I have the, you know, the little difficulty, you know, the, if someone, you know, the, the uh, Aliyani already asked that, you know, if someone very lovingly and, you know, the, and uh, the, can, can you have something, you know, the, how, how would, you know, how would we say that, you know, the, the, you know, the, I'm not going to take anything, you know, the, because of my, you know, the, then I am thinking myself, you know, the, it could be wrong or, you know, the, then my, my spirituality has gone. If I even think about that, you know, the, that person, you know, the, is not a good person or, you know, the, the, and the, I shouldn't eat the other people cooked, you know, the, uh, if I am thinking in that part, you know, the, maybe they are not clean, their you know, the vessels are not clean, you know, I don't want to get it and all kinds of things. If it comes to my mind, I am wondering whether I am losing my spirituality you know, the, uh, the, the, because of that sort of thinking, you know, the, the, because Swami said, you know, the, as <clears throat> we are not, you know, the sages, so, you know, the living in the forest, you know, the, the living alone with all those things. Swami said, you know, the, we have to still survive at the community with the, you know, the, 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 with the spirituality, you know, the, whatever in you know, the uh, Swami taught us, we have to follow that one. But the, at the same time, we have to keep in our mind that we are still part of the community or part of the, you know, the family, you know, Sai family or whatever the family we, we belong to. We have to appreciate and, you know, the, the what the other people are doing in the i'm thinking that you know, if someone bring the food at the you know the, the size center or in the group of gathering if i say that i'm not going to eat you know what you make it you know the the, uh, the how the other person will be thinking you know the maybe is anandi it? is you know the, the something wrong with anandi you know the, what what she is talking about you know the, the, the. Yeah. thank you you know the, the. <laughs> you know, I think this is bothering everyone, Master. Everyone. So the thing is, if somebody is not doing something right, I think telling that person this is not right, I think you should improve. There's nothing wrong with it. If that person feels, you know, slighted by that, intentions matter. Ultimately, what with what intention we tell somebody matters. Number one. Number two, um, sometimes just because they will think badly about us, we should not avoid, you know, uh, telling them something which they need to learn. Okay. That should be our attitude, number one. Then number two, um, if the person really loves you, they will love your wishes. Otherwise, that person doesn't have love. The person loves themselves more than loving you. Number three, we are we don't want to displease a person. What about displacing Swami? Do we ever give thought to that? Will Swami be more pleased by us by this? Of course, Swami doesn't want us to go around and tell everyone you are wrong. What you are doing is not right. But to the extent, if if it's interfering our own life, I think uh, there's no point, in, no problem in saying that. Uh, this is what we do. Um, if people may dislike you, doesn't matter. They may think that you are weird. That doesn't matter. Is my personal view. Uh, because, see, these are situations uh, we encounter in public, you know, when we live in this. There are many people who say, oh, we go to a party. You know, everyone is having drinks. It doesn't look uh, nice, you know, if we also don't take part. And people take part. They will say we are Swami, you know, we our study circle, we did just we uh, today in our center, we did the study circle where we discuss exactly this. Swami says we people go to the club, they are taking to uh, bottles, wine, drinking wine and yeah. say cheers and they think that they are doing something good. 
Um, so the thing is sometimes uh, we may be pleasing others, but for their own uh, downfall and our own downfall. So I think we have to decide how, how, why we are doing and with what attitude we are pursuing that I think is important. Uh, with Swami for Swami. You see, there are many discourses where Swami has said, if you are eating non-vegetarian, you are a demon. Demon, you know, you know. Swami has said this. So people can say, oh, there were devotees who eat meat and come, they will feel slighted. Why did Swami say this? What has to be said, if you are really serious about spirituality, that's it. Uh, I think so Swami also sometimes says things not to hurt. I think that if we are trying something to hurt somebody, that I don't think that's right. But I think if, we, if people need to learn and they should get better, I think there's no harm in saying. Um, because sometimes we always, we are, we are uh, not too worried about displeasing Swami. We'll say, oh, he is loving. He will put up with this. But we don't want to displease other people. This is the world, uh, I think. <laughs> that's, okay, Sister Shivani. Just to add to what brother is saying, and I again had an experience, but if we, I'm just thinking, if we talk soul to soul to that person, say, this is what my practice, I am 100%, not even 99, 100% sure people will understand. It's like at the bodily level, we are thinking that, you know what, that person might not feel. But if we are so genuinely practicing and we will tell genuinely to the other person, People will understand. People will even respect. Hey, you have your discipline. I have to just not to impringe in your discipline. This is your life principles. Like our indigenous, right? People, they have their own ways of doing things. And that's what they're saying. This is our way of living. They are not ashamed of. They were forced to live certain ways. But now they are coming out and they're saying, this is what we practice, spirituality. And this is what we believe in. So I guess... If we talk soul to soul, uh, people will do respect. We are in that era where people will respect. That's just my thought. Thank you, sister. Uh, just to uh, understand, because I guess the tricky part is you have to, in your mind, make a decision whether you think this person is like, because, for example, if somebody who is pure in all these ways that Swami has mentioned, if they cook food for you and give it to you, then that should be beneficial to you. But if somebody's not, then that food is not beneficial to you. So it's like we're left with making this decision, which feels judgmental. And judgment is again, you know, judgment is thinking that I am superior, somebody's inferior. But judge, so let's not put the thought of inferior superior. Uh, and, you know, judgment is, you know, oh, this person. Here. It, it's a, it's a, as somebody said, too much analysis of the person. Mm -hmm. <laughs> too much analysis of the person becomes judgment. But if you observe, you experience, mm -hmm. then you, see, for example, if you ate some dish, that dish gave you a bad stomachache. Okay. Are you judging the dish? End of story. And if somebody serves that dish, what will you tell them? You will tell them it does not agree with me. And if they say, no, no, why it will agree? I have cooked. You know, if they say something, you can still say, you can insist, no, I will not touch. Okay. What I'm saying is, our, our thought, we should be very clear. Okay. If the other person may feel slighted, sometimes we can't help. You know, their person, their ego. See, if a person really loves you, they will respect you for what it is. And if they don't, they don't really love you and don't worry about them. Don't care about them, as I would say. Uh, it's okay. Uh, but when Swami says don't judge somebody, means, uh, you know, don't dwell on that person and see that person's a bad person, that person's a bad person at all times. Uh, but I think at a particular point in time, when they are giving something, you don't, at that point in time, you can make a choice, make a decision what to do with the food which they've given. Such as sometimes Swami says, talk obligingly, even if you cannot oblige. <laughs> so, there's always garbage and compost uh, options available. Really? What, just, you mean just to throw out the food? 
compost it, you know. <laughs> I feel it is too rude to throw away food like that. <laughs> anyway, I think you, the person who gives you food must be really loving. She, she or she wants to share the same food, what he likes or she likes with you. So that's fine. See, I, I think we can make a choice like this, you know. Mm -hmm. If we are going through a time when our sadhana is suffering a lot, we need to make all the efforts to make sure that it is, comes back to stability. If the sadhana is in steady foot, you may be able to accommodate a little bit here, there. So ultimately, the test, Swami is saying, when you're doing japa, when you're doing dhyana, if you are not getting ekagrata, that means you have to be very, very strict. <clears throat> okay, so that means you're in a weak situation. Weak, your mind is not as strong. Mm -hmm. So Swami is suggesting all this for your own meditation and japa to become improved. If you're working on that, this is essential. So if you have mastered it to some extent, maybe you can accommodate a little bit of, you know, adjustment, yeah. okay, accommodation. But it's ultimately, it all depends on where your sadhana is, I think is what I would say. If you see the sadhana, then you should. I remembered about little bit of accommodation about the ocean. The ocean, even even the small bit of thing, it won't take it in. You so, tell tell the story properly, sister. <laughs> so we had to say sorry on <laughs> you. So you know, sister is talking about. Uh, Can you tell us? I don't know. I've been talking a lot. I will ask anyone else who knows the story to tell. Kalyan, you, I think you know the story. You tell. No, good. you tell the story better. <laughs> <laughs> See, Dakshina Murthy was someone who took everything in this world as a guru. And he learned different principles from different experiences. So once when he was by the ocean, he was just sitting and watching the ocean. And he found that some small particle had was there in the ocean, and the waves were trying to push it up. You know, they were pushing it to the shore. So Dakshinamu said, "How can the ocean, which is so huge, uh, so vast, can accommodate everything in this world? Why is it taking so much pain to push this small piece of dirt out?" And he said it is being very inconsiderate. The ocean is being very rude. Okay. <laughs> so that was his thought. Then the ocean tells Dakshinamurti, look here. Once I leave one small part to enter me, before I know, I will be full of this. So in the case of anything negative entering us, we should make all the effort to push it out. However good you may be. Uh, Swami, there's another story also Swami says um, in one of these Gita discourses in 84. Uh, he says if you, if there is a small lamp, piece of a, la a lamp, even if something little touches it, the lamp will turn off. If you have a little lamp. But he says, if you are a, if there's a fire which is like a wild fire, you even put uh, even a live tree, it will burn. It will burn it. You pour water, it will still burn. Nothing can affect. So we need to make sure whether we have the little flame or we are the wild fire. Uh, then we will know. Then Swami says, sometimes if in a lab, when you are so small and weak. Be very careful about your company. When you become a wildfire, others can benefit from it. But you need to know where, what you are and according to your size and your strength, take on the world. So I think ultimately that's what it is. We need to judge for ourselves how our sadhana is, uh, how our state of mind is based on that we can we have to be strict i think that's why swami is telling all this because he's talking about sattva rajas tamas how do we overcome tamas how do yeah. we overcome rajas 
and how do we attain sattva? You know, that's all this is related to that. So Swami is telling, if we have to evaluate for ourselves where we are, what can we accommodate? And then based on where we are, what we can accommodate, we should make our choices. Whether even if it's judging, it's okay. For this purpose, so that I become sattvic, it's okay. Mm -hmm. See, Vibhishana told his brother and left him and came. He can say, I, I shouldn't be rude to my brother. He didn't think about it. He said, it is a, it's a bad, bad company. I will move. But others stay, remain with him. So I think I will stop here. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Dakshinamurti being the aspect of Shiva, Shiva himself in the form of Dakshinamurti is a guru. And that guru who knows everything, in spite of that, he wants to learn a small from everywhere, from whatever he teaches, whatever thing teaches him, he is ready to accept. That should be the humility of a guru also. It, it uh, just uh, conveys that idea also. Sairam. Sairam, thank you, Auntie. Swami is putting a tough challenge on us, our plate. You know? Yeah. <laughs> see, if see, we should understand if every our life is so so perfect, we are doing everything right. We don't need to come. We don't need to study this. Okay, but if our life is not going that well, we need help. Then we need to listen to Swami and practice. Yeah. Simple. And each person can make the choice accordingly. <laughs> Swami has given this opportunity to learn. Every moment of our life is a teaching. He teaches us. And Swami says, if you are not going to change your way of life, you will remain the same. Yeah. Yes, Brother Dasa. Oh, <laughs> brother. So one time, uh, Krishna and Satyabhama went to see the Pandava when they are in the jungle, you know, 12 years. Uh, so that time, uh, Satyabhama asked Astrobadi, how you can keep all the husbands happy? I'm finding difficult. Can you give me the secret? She said, she cooked the food every day and so very um, politely and everything, make sure they eat and everything. Then she eat, she's the one eat very last. So that is a, one of the technique she followed to keep all the husbands very happy too. Thank you, brother. That will be difficult now. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm serious. That will be so difficult. Okay. I agree, Sivani. I know. <laughs> so it's uh, it's, that's an I suggesting that Satyabama is complaining about Krishna. No, so she asked, "What is the technique you keeping Lord? Uh, I know all the five husbands happy." What is the secret? I am finding it difficult to manage one person. Yeah, so that's why she was complaining about Krishna then. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I think in this age they will ask, how do you keep your wife happy? Oh, I feed her first and then. <laughs> Sulta. Sulta. <laughs> Are we going to be tied up with food forever? <laughs> Auntie, it's 4.24. I don't know. What... I think we should keep on saying something about food. That's yeah. it. Stomach full now. <laughs> stomach full. Now. Tripti. Contentment. So, why so don't the discussion... Yeah, sorry, sorry, now. sister, you go ahead. Why don't yeah. we see the next paragraph if it's a continuation or not? If it's something new, then we can... Maybe we'll just read. I don't know whether we'll have enough time to discuss. Only one paragraph, if you have. Yeah, it's just one more paragraph. The mind should be free from anxiety and worry, hate and fear, greed and pride. 
It should be saturated with love for all beings. It has to dwell in God. It has to be restrained from pursuing objective pleasures. No lower thought should be allowed to creep in. All thoughts must be directed towards the elevation of the individual to higher planes. This is the proper tapas of the mind or manas. Arun? Yes, Auntie. Should we go ahead with the Telugu or no? Yeah, we can read the Telugu also and we, will, we, will not, we, will, we may not discuss, but... Manasunu Manasuna etti vicharamunu pettu konaka sakala pranulaku yellapudu melu koru chundavadano. Auntie, there may be a few more... Uh... Uh, no, this one... Mano Nirmalampai Chapina Ahar Subra. Yeah, so just before also we have not covered, Auntie. Oh, not covered? Edo Manchi Ruchiga Vantuva. Oh, Chacha. Edo Manchi Ruchiga Vantuva Danyu. Sulubamaga Dorkina Danyu. Chut Chutaku Shuddamaga Nadanyu. E. Pai Pai Putal and Matrame Chudaka. Baitavani Pravartal Nukuda Jagrataka Chushrichala Avasaram. That's the idea. They have not translated, Auntie. Oh. Yeah. The so previous paragraph, the previous page, was it not there? No, it's not there in English. It's not. Oh, okay. Okay. Then so I'll, Swami is saying. I'll go slowly. Swami is telling. Eto manch. So some Auntie, read slowly. I will translate. Atti vani ne. Eto. Eto man. Yeah, sorry. Eto. Eto manchi ruchiga vandu vadaniyu. So, someone who cooks very tastily. Sulubamuga Dorkinadaniyo. He is easily acquired. Available. He is already available. Okay. Chu Chutaku Shuddamuga Unadaniyo. To see, look, he seems to be very clean. E Pai Pai Putalanu Matrame Chudaka. Just these three, this, these things, uh, not only paying attention to these alone. And Bayetavani Pravartamula no Kudano, Jagrataka, Chuchuta, Chala Avasaram. One should see the behavior of the outside person. Mm. Uh, Has to be have... carefully, carefully examined. Yeah, okay. Mano Nirmalamupai Chapina Ahar Subrata, Subratano, Patti Undano. Mano Nirmalamupai. Mano Nirmalamu. Mm. Pai Chapina Ahar. So Swami said. The, the blemish the blemishlessness of the mind is dependent on the above stated subjects yeah ahara subratanu patti undu no it depends on ahara depends on, depends on the purity of the food which yes. is stated above mano nirmalam ekkadundi ekkadundi yu upayogam undadu mano nirmalamu okka Mokka don't you? What is it? Mano nirmala mokka. Mokka don't you? Upa yoga mundadu. So Swami is saying just because the mind is blemishless, mm. that alone is not sufficient. It will not be useful. Dhani ki dehamu vakko nirmala mokkuda avasaram. For that, even the cleanliness or the purity of the speech and the body are also equally important. Vitine sharirika manasika this is what is called the tapas of the thought, word, and mind. Deed. Uh, so, deed. the body, the mind, and the speech. And this paragraph is not there in English? No, it is there, Auntie, but not everything is, uh, some pieces are not there. Oh, okay. So, next paragraph. I think it was in the previous page, no, Kalyani? Previous page it was, I think. Yeah, yeah, but it and didn't. Yeah, okay, okay. The purity of the mind can be and has to be supplemented by the purity of the body yes. as well as purity in its important function, speech. That is the real tapas, okay. physical and mental and vocal. Uh, that was there, yeah. So, okay, now, so this so is this what we covered. So Swami is saying for our mind to become free and, you know, pure, 
the above said stated food discipline is uh, necessary and then he says that alone is no, uh, mind purity alone is insufficient you would have the body as well as the speech also and it can be supplemented swami says the purity of the mind can be all and has to be supplemented has so that means mano nirmalam ogati chaladu uh then next paragraph i should i write at time what i is... think it's 5 4 31 aunty sorry let let us leave it for next week. we will leave this one sairam sairam we will close with some okay sir om samasta loka sukhino bhavantu samasta loka sukhino bhavantu samasta loka sukhino bhavantu om Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Sairam. Sairam. Thank you so much, Sairam. Sairam. Sairam.